I'm on my second Christmas Eve trail run. This trail is not far from Sugar Tree. It is on the map on Onyx as Liberty. That's all it says. I think we're just gonna call it Liberty Trail. Uh, I'm at the very beginning of the trail. It's definitely a little more winding, but it doesn't seem difficult. There's a lot of signs of logging out here. There's areas that are cleared out. It's getting late in the day. The sun is, is starting to get out towards the ridge line, so this will almost certainly be a night run, but that's okay because I have my trusty knob sight auxiliary lighting. So let's hit the trail and let's see what this has in store. And I am also mapping this one for on X. So check the app to see where it's at. first pull-off that I've found on the Liberty Trail. Uh, it's definitely a little more remote feeling than Sugar Tree, even though Sugar Tree is way out there. This one just feels more remote. It's narrower, it's a little more rugged, although it's, it's, it's not difficult. It does appear to have some through hiking trails though. There's one that comes through here and goes over here and up that way. I don't know what trail it is for hiking, if you know, feel free to leave me a comment if you've hiked through here before. But we're gonna get back on the trail. I'm burning daylight, and as I said before, this is almost certainly going to end up being a night adventure. Never get tired of views like that. trail is definitely uh, narrower than uh, Sugar Tree was. Uh, given that it has a very narrow window of the year that it's open, it's a very seasonal trail. I have very low expectations as far as campsites go. I don't think there's going to be much out here, but the trail itself so far, I'm only a little ways into it, uh, is not bad. Like I said, it's a little narrower, uh, there's a little more vegetation closer to the trail, but it definitely feels a little more adventurous than Sugar Tree did. could potentially camp here I suppose it's cleared out there's tire tracks in here somebody obviously has I don't know if this is a right and proper campsite but I suppose you could camp here so I will waypoint it doesn't have a lot of room to get out and set up cameras. I found this area 
area that's a little cleared out, I'm definitely taking advantage of it. I have a feeling that this trail is going to be really cool after dark just because of how tight it is and how remote it is. So I found myself a good place to park and watch the sunset and I'm actually going to waste a little time and let it get a little darker before I continue. It has been a long day and I have done a lot of filming. So my batteries are running a little low, especially my GoPros and my drones. If there's two things that love to consume batteries, it's GoPro and drones. So I actually brought along my Blue Eddy AC70, figuring that I might need today to do a little bit of recharging. And I presently have my GoPro Hero 12 and two of my DJI uh, Mavic 3 batteries charging. I'm using the AC outputs on it because I have those chargers with me. Uh, they're drawing 137 watts. The battery was at 94 percent when I when I started uh, it says it can charge them for just shy of five hours uh, I doubt that I'll sit here long enough to let these batteries completely recharge but I'm just trying to top them off because I anticipate doing some more uh, filming this evening and I have a third battery that's fully charged for the drone so I'm probably actually going to put the drone up and take the lay of the land while these batteries are charging but it was definitely a godsend having this thing. Uh, if, I, if I needed them, I do have two available USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, and a DC output. So I have a lot more places I can plug stuff in. And honestly, I'm probably going to in just a minute because the camera I'm filming this with, my Sony, is down to 42% right now. So while I fly the drone, I'm probably going to pop the battery out of this and I'm probably going to plug it in and charge it. So I am really glad that Blue Eddie sent this to me and I am glad that I brought it with me today. I don't know if the microphone on the video camera on my phone is picking it up. But there is a lot of barking and howling hound dogs off in that direction. A lot. So I don't think... I don't think anybody's hunting over there. I would be willing to bet somebody lives over there and they've got their pens over there with their dogs. A lot of dogs though. Hmm. We're still charging away on all of our accessories. You can see there's my Sony, one of my GoPros, the two drone batteries that I'm charging. We're at 90%. I don't know what you're thinking. Don't you have spare batteries for your stuff? Of course I have spare batteries for my stuff. What do you think, I'm some kind of amateur? I just forgot to charge them last night. Rookie mistake. So the Blue Eddy AC70 is coming in clutch today. I'm not just doing this because I want to show it off for you. I'm doing this because it's actually saving my butt right now because I probably would have depleted that GoPro. Sony might have made it, and I did still have one fully charged drone battery, so. It did save me at least in the GoPro department, but it is definitely handy and of my power stations it's the smallest, so it's, uh, it doesn't take up a lot of room. We're getting close to sunset, so we're going to get this little adventure back underway shortly. If you've never been out here on a remote trail like this at sunset, it's pretty cool. You should definitely try it.
we aren't at true uh, astronomical sunset because we're not on flat land. But the sun is dipping behind the ridge line, so I'm going to call it sunset. I'm going to pack my stuff back up. And I'm going to hit the trail, and we're going to see what this place is like at night. going to assume at this point that everyone has at least a basic familiarity with the drama unfolding in Utah as the Blue Ribbon Coalition and the state of Utah battle the Bureau of Land Management over their trail closures at Moab. I have seen some people, a very small majority or very small minority, that have said, well, we don't deal with Bureau of Land Management out here in the east. It's not really our problem. Well. You don't think the trail closures don't happen out here. This trail that shows us being open on every map is closed and clearly closed permanently. So this has now become an in and out trip and I will make sure to notate that in the track for on X off road that this was an in and out that the trail is blocked about halfway through. So this is why we have to be mindful and we have to be good stewards of the land because trail closures do happen out here. Although we don't deal with BLM, the US Forest Service does close trails.
sometimes when I, I have a trail trip and it doesn't work out, the trail's closed or the trail isn't what I was expecting, sometimes I'll just trash the video. I'll just, you know, whatever. I won't use it. Or, you know, I might use clips of it for, you know, a, an Instagram reel or something like that. But I'm going to finish this video because even though uh, it was closed halfway through as an in and out trail, it was still a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed coming out here. I, I have a feeling that had the whole thing uh, been been uh, open, it probably would would have been epic. It probably this probably would end up being a trail that I would make it a point to come back to just to have fun. But it still was a good trip. Well, I'm back where I started. Can't really tell, but the clearing from the beginning of the video is behind me. Uh, as I said a little while ago in the video, uh, if this trail hadn't been closed, uh, I probably would have ended up, I would have liked it enough that I'd probably come back here just to have fun, not to shoot a video or to map it. Speaking of mapping it, I did still map it for Onyx Off-Road. I will indicate in the description of the trail that it is permanently closed at the halfway point, but that it is still a worthwhile in and out trail. Two pieces of gear came in clutch on this trip, that Blue Eddy AC70 power station and my Novsite lights. They actually kept the trail bright enough that the GoPros still worked. And again, I can't stress enough how terrible GoPros are in low light. If you have liked this video, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. I, I know I sound like a broken record sometimes saying that, but it's really the best thing you can do for me. And head on over to my Patreon if you don't mind. Patreon.com slash Defiant Offroad. Uh, I will never hold GPS coordinates of a public trail ransom in return for a Patreon subscription. I'll never say, hey, go to Patreon if you want to find out where this trail is. It's public. It belongs to all of us. I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep it ransom for that. But if you do want to see campsites or if you want the GPS, GPX track of the trail, head on over there because that's where that will be. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. This has been Defiant Off-Road.